So the goal of this session is that by 11.15, when you step over that threshold, I want you to pick a real-life prospective lead that you've got right now. And when you walk out the door, I want you to know that when you return to your home office Thursday morning, at 8.01, you will know exactly what lead you're calling. You will know exactly why you're calling them and what it is that you want to accomplish. And you will know precisely what it is that you're going to say to them with confidence. All right, does that sound like a pretty good deal? Once you have prepared, then and only then, have you earned the right to pick up the phone. If you haven't done your due diligence, your homework, you have no good business picking up that phone. You have no good business meeting with that person um, until you've done the preparation. First thing that you're going to do is open. And again, this is an area where people short shrift it. Opening is important because they're formulating their first impression of you in what, seven, seven or ten seconds, right? So that's going to set the whole tone of your meeting or the whole flavor of your conversation. And you want to make sure that you're stepping forward on the right foot um, when you open. As a matter of fact, the process I'm going to give you for opening, it will work for anything. It'll work for a cold call. It'll work for repeat customers. Most of my business is long time repeat customers. I still use the, the uh, skill steps for them. This will work if you're giving a presentation to a group. It'll work on the phone. It'll work on a webinar. It'll work face to face, formally, informally, drop in, uh, voicemail. Once you have opened and they know what to expect, the next thing that you're going to do is ask questions. And probably the biggest mistake I see here is that people do a lot more talking and not enough listening. So sales is far more about listening. You should only be talking 20% of the time, and that 20% of the time should be asking good strategic questions. How do you know what questions to ask? It comes from your preparation. All of that drives what questions you're going to ask. So talk less, listen more. And one of the biggest mistakes I see people make is that they um, ask a question, and they're so busy thinking about their answer, they're not listening <laughs> to what the person is saying. So the entire conversation is driven exclusively around them. It's listening, not telling about what's important to them. One good question to wrap up there with them, when you think you have it all, I call it the million dollar question, and that is, when you think you've got all that information on the table, ask them, what else is important for me to know? Not, is there, a, is there anything else, or is there something else? You say, what else is important for me to know? Because usually that's when people do the eye shifting and where they get a little nervous and then they say, well, I probably shouldn't say this, but. And that's where you get the best information because other people aren't thinking to ask that question. Once you build the rapport and the trust, they'll share that inside information with you and that could be the difference between you and the other two people who are competing for the piece of business. Now, when you have a full understanding of what it is that they want and they <coughs> And what's important to them, then you've earned the right to move on and offer up your idea, your support statement, what you think that you can do to help them and to fix it. And once you've agreed on all of that, the final thing that you're going to do is to close. And another common thing I hear in the seminars are, oh Deanna, tell me how to close. I need to learn how to close. I'll be listing out what people want on the chart and say, I just need to close more business. I need to close more sales. And there's no big secret to it because closing isn't the issue. If you are doing all of these other things right in the conversation and you're doing them effectively, the close is superfluous. It's just an add-on. It's just a follow-up. A close is nothing. And so once you close, you're simply recapping uh, your solution, the value that it brings to the table for them, and then the benefits that they're going to enjoy by working with you because you're making that problem or that pain lessen or go away. A sales objective is any action that moves the sale forward, that moves that cycle forward. It's a series of small steps over time. That three years took, took a lot of small steps to move forward. So it should be specific as possible. It must be actionable. It should be measurable. It should have a time frame. So in my business, I, I do all training, and uh, a, a, a 
An objective might be, I want to get them to do a pilot class so they can see, experience, and test it, and that would be an objective I'd want to close on. I might get them to close on a needs assessment. I might get them to close on just a meeting or a lunch. Any of those things are going to move forward. Right. And you should always have two objectives. If you have one and it gets shot down immediately, then you're dead in the water. So you want to always have a backup objective, you know, especially if it's costing 350 bucks each time, you better have a contingency objective. All right. My example with my association was this. I called him and my objective was to find out what is their recruiting process and what is their criteria and then to close on whatever the first step of the recruiting process was. It was a lofty goal. So my backup objective was if he was busy and didn't have the time, my backup objective was to then schedule a phone call to have that same conversation. All right. Those are specific, they're actionable, and if I accomplish them, they are moving the conversation, they're moving the sales cycle forward, right?